first reading is from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us, because the Lord has anointed us, and he has sent us to bring us good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty of the captives and release of the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of God to comfort to all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the plant of the Lord, display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up from the former devastation, and they shall repair the ruin of the cities and the devastation of many generations. <clears throat> For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their expenses, and I will make their everlasting covenant with them. Let the sentence show among the nations and offer spring among the people. And who sees their show knowledge, they are the people of whom the Lord has blessed. I gratefully rejoice in the Lord. My whole body shall adore in the God. And he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland, and as a bride adores herself with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden calls its own fruit up in the spring. So the Lord God can put us righteousness and praise to the spring before of all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. of Zion, then were we like those who dream, then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy, then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore your fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the naked. The Lord has done a hundred things for us. Those who sword with tears will reap with songs of joy those who go out weeping carrying their seed will come again with joy shouldering their sheaves the Lord has done a hundred things for Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from First Colossians. Rejoice always, praying without ceasing. Give them in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. 
May the God of peace himself sanctify your entirety, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of your Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you in faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord. O Lord. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Judean leaders sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Lord God, in the midst of things we cannot control that afflict and assail us, in the midst of futures we cannot see that nevertheless worry us, in the midst of all the doubts and fears and failures which you see, you are here and with us. Grant us to not only perceive where you are bringing us resurrection, life, and liberation, but to point to your action in this world so that all may see that you act on behalf of the broken and so that they may do the same. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. May the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Well, it happened again this morning. It's become a bit of a routine. We met downstairs in the area of the parsonage where we put on our shoes, and I said to Pastor Noah, are we walking this morning? Now, what do you think he did? Yeah, I'm, ca I'm calling you out. Come on, what do you, I you, I no, I, not you. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Hepler, you be quiet. You've already got your doctorate. You don't need any more grades. Everyone else. What do you think he did? If you're going for a walk in the morning, you put your shoes on, right? That's one thing you do. What else do you do? You put a coat on. Well, what coat? Raincoat. Raincoat. Why? How do you know it's going to rain? One person at a time, y'all. Now, first you won't talk. Now you all talk at the same time. <laughs> Why would you put on a raincoat? How would you know it's going to rain? The weather. the weather. Well, how do you know the weather? Because the weatherman. The weatherman, the weather forecast, right? So Pastor Noah typically said, let me see what the weather is. And he didn't, you know, slaughter a pig and read the intestines. And he didn't go to the Bible and read Isaiah and guess. He put on, he actually searched on his phone because he's a smartphone person, you know. He's one of those people. Everything's Google. Hey, Google, will it rain today, right? But back when I was growing up and when many of us were growing up, we had this thing called the weather on the news, right? 
and you watch the weatherman, and the weatherman, or the weather woman, or the forecaster of any kind, says, well, here's what we can expect the weather to be like today. Now, I want you to imagine that Pastor Noah had said to me, well, the weather forecast says it's going to rain this morning, probably between 10 and noon, so we probably don't want to walk. And I had responded, Pastor Noah, who is this weather person, and why should we trust them? What's their biography? What are their credentials? Who authorized them? Pastor Noah first would have thrown something hard at me <laughs> and then would have walked out the door <laughs> because we don't care. <laughs> it's beside the point. No one cares what the weatherman is wearing. No one cares what the weather forecaster's credentials are as long as they are qualified to tell us the forecast because the forecast is what we're there for. What's going to happen? What's the good word? What can we expect? I think the same thing is happening in this reading from John. These leaders from Jerusalem have sent a group of interrogators out to John in the wilderness. Now, this is John in the Gospel of John. So he's not really the Baptist. He is baptizing, but that's kind of a footnote. No one cares. What matters in John's Gospel is not that John is baptizing, but that John is pointing, testifying to what? The light to Jesus, yes, very, very good. But how do we know Jesus is the light of the world in the Gospel of John? Well, but we don't actually get any report of his birth, right? So it's not his birth, it's the prologue of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The light shines in the darkness, the darkness has not overcome it. The true light which enlightens everyone is coming into the world. This is about Jesus, and all of that is before this episode with John. In the Gospel of John, John is not primarily the Baptist. John is the forerunner, the one who goes ahead of Jesus to point at Jesus. We might call him the forecaster. And what these questions are doing is going to the forecaster and not saying, well, give me more details about what's going to happen, what you're reporting, but give us more details about you. And John's response is, you should not care. Something so much more important is going on. You're getting distracted. And I think we do get distracted, don't we? Not necessarily about the weatherman, but when others report to us. How often have we sat in church and gotten distracted from the point? How often have we sat in a council meeting or at a business meeting or with a friend how often have we been traveling in the streets or at work or with our families and missed the point? We get distracted by all the accidents and failures of the world. And we get distracted because we don't know what we're looking for or what to expect. Here comes John the baptizer, John the forerunner once again. Here is what to expect. There is one coming after me and he's going to do it all. What will he do? This light that enters the world, as we learn in John 1, this one who baptizes not with water, but with water and spirit, as we'll hear Jesus say in John 3, this one who is already, according to John, among you, though you do not know him. And that's so important that John's forecast is not, oh, this is going to happen someday. The rain is already upon you. The weather is happening. The rain of God has come. The wind is blowing, the temperature is shifting, the world is changing and turning around. It's happening right now. And it's going to keep happening. So we don't just have references to John 1 here and John 3. This happens where? In Bethany across the Jordan. The other Bethany that no one ever mentions. Why? Because the only Bethany anyone cares about in the Gospel of John is the Bethany of Mary and Martha and Lazarus where Jesus weeps at the tomb of his friend, where Jesus goes to raise his friend from the dead, where his friend is told, come out of your grave, where we are told, unbind him and let him go, where Mary or Martha or both confess, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world, where resurrection is active. Because even here, even here in a time of waiting, even here in a time of not recognizing, we know what to look for in God, in Christ. That's why we have this Isaiah reading. Again, John points at Isaiah. And here we have Isaiah in our first gospel, in our first reading, right? I have come because the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. 
To do what? To preach sermons? To baptize? No. What is the mission of Jesus in Isaiah that Jesus appropriates for himself? To heal the sick, to comfort the afflicted, to set the captives free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to bring life to the dead, to transform our lives, meeting us where we are broken, in need, in bondage and captivity. And that is the mission of God always and forever. That is what God has always been doing and will always be doing. That is what God is accomplishing in Christ Jesus, not just sometime in the future, but here and now, even though he walks unseen amongst you and unknown. For Christ can always be found working in those places of brokenness, captivity, fear, injustice, and bondage, working on the side of the oppressed, on the side of the afflicted, on the side of the grieving, on the side of the dead, to work life abundant for everyone, always, everywhere. And that good news is why we have this reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Not because everything is always happy. Rain and sunshine still come and go. But because God is always among you, working in Christ for your good, for your life, for your health, for those who are most in need, where you are most empty, where you are most broken, where you are least able to see Christ. There, Christ is for you and for us all. That good news is why we get to pray without ceasing, because we are here for each other, because God is here in Christ for us. We rejoice always because God will never tire of working life abundant. We rejoice always in this good news because no matter who the messenger is, no matter what they're wearing, no matter where they're from, no matter what their qualifications are, yours or mine, God is good. And the proof is in the Jesus Christ who will never abandon you. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.